What's going on, everyone? It's Moose here with Air Guns Michigan tonight, or today, I suppose. I want to talk to you guys about entering into the world of PCP, pre-charged pneumatics, okay? Every day, I am part of so many different Facebook groups and forums and, and um, you know, just all these different groups, and I see these questions that are asked on a daily basis. And generally these questions are asked because people that are trying to get into PCP don't always necessarily understand exactly what they're getting into. So I wanna do this pretty lengthy, comprehensive guide in getting into PCP air guns. This is not about, I think you should get this gun or that gun but it's going to explain a lot of really important details that I see asked all the time in these different groups. So I hope that you guys have something to drink, kick back, put your feet up, whatever you're doing. Don't take your eyes off the road if you happen to be driving while watching this, but uh, definitely let's, uh, let's start talking. So um, this is a very common entry-level gun. This is the uh, Umarex Gauntlet, and in my opinion, I don't think that you could ever go wrong getting a gauntlet. They are extremely accurate. They have been around long enough that they're well-tested. Um, I know there's other guns out there, but this is one of my personal favorites. As a matter of fact, I own three of them. There's another one sitting right back here behind me, and there's another one sitting over there on the wall. This particular one is in 177 caliber. Not that that's relevant to this video, but just wanted to let you know what it was. So one thing that people have a tendency to not understand, or sometimes just don't, is how do I fill my PCP air gun? Um, I can't tell you honestly how many times I have seen people say, man, I got it hooked to my compressor out in my garage, but it's just not filling my gun. That is correct. That compressor that you used for your pneumatic tools or uh, painting or filling up your car tires will nowhere near come close the pressure that is required to fill one of these guns. I don't care how small the tank is. I don't care uh, what brand it is. Uh, it's irrelevant. You cannot fill one of these guns with that compressor. At all. Um, so, um, first things first. I hear this a lot. <clears throat> I have a PCP gun and for some reason, when I'm trying to fill my bottle, air is leaking out of the, the barrel. It's leaking out of the tube. This can be caused by a couple of different things. One, it can be caused by a faulty O-ring, uh, whether it's internally in the gun. But more times than not, it is caused simply because in order to fill this tank, the gun needs to be cocked if the bottle is empty just a good way of doing it and the reason behind that is is the way that this gun works is when this bolt is cocked back the hammer internally is pulled back away from the valve that is holding back all the air that's in this tank if the gun is not cocked and that hammer is pushed forward in its resting position it may have enough pressure to push up against the valve pin opening up your valve, and then allowing air to simply just circulate past the valve. It does not mean that your gun is faulty. It does not mean that you've got a bad one. It simply means you need to release the hammer pressure off of that valve pin. So what you do is you can simply cock the gun, bring the gun back forward, close the action, and now the hammer is pulled away from 
that valve pin. So as it was rusting and may have had that valve pin in, now the hammer is pulled back, allowing that valve seat to sit tight, which is on the other side of this bottle here, and allow the bottle to take compressed air. Another thing that sometimes happens, and this is another um, issue that sometimes people run into, is you have a brand new gun and you want to pump the gun up and all you have is a hand pump, which is a very viable option for you younger people who aren't so round as I am, who are maybe in a little bit better shape. Not that I can't hand pump a gun, I can, but man, I'm old and I don't enjoy it. Um, but uh, what will happen is, is when you have your hand pump and your hand pump is connected to your gun, it's simply just not putting enough air in quick enough for your pump or for your bottle to actually seal at the valve stem. Irregardless of whether this is cocked or not, some guns like a very quick, sharp burst of air. It's just one of those things that happens. Um, with a little bit of work and a quick pump on the hand pump, you can probably get it to seat, but it's gonna take a little bit of work. And it's certainly easier to do with the tank. And we'll talk about that more when we start talking about different ways to pump our guns. Uh, on the Umarex Gauntlet, the fill port on this gun is simply a, I'll bring this around so you guys can see it up close, just a BSP nipple, okay? So what that means is, is that um, any hand pump that you'll get, any compressor or any um, uh, PCP tank that you'll get will already have a fitting on the end that will connect directly to this plug, okay? So, uh, and I know I said that wrong, um, but I actually have um, one that I just have sitting around. Um, they simply look like this. The collar will actually pull back, and what you do is you just simply take it, slide it on, and it's mounted to the gun. You always want to give it a good tug, too, to make sure that it is held on nicely. But this is going to come uh, with the end of 99% of all the air gun tanks that you might buy. Uh, if you buy, like, a Young Hang compressor or any of the um, other compressors, they already come with those fittings, so not to worry. However, there are different PCP guns, and we're going to talk about another one right now so that you guys can understand. This is pretty typical um, as far as um, most manufacturers. FX, a lot of, most of the FX come that way. I think, um, I don't know, most of the other guns do. Um, however, if for some reason your gun does not come with one of those, it will come with something different. Uh, something like that will go into the Hudson line of air guns and they use what's called a fill probe. So what you will get is you will get this little brass fitting that will somehow or another um, fit into the uh, tube of your gun, uh, in which case you will then connect your uh, compressor to the end of that, that um, nipple. But here's the next question, and this gets this gets asked all the time. So once again, I'm gonna walk around the other side here and I'm gonna demonstrate what my nipple looks like or what my fitting looks like, okay? This little silver piece on the end that will connect to my uh, air tank, right? These are just loose fittings. This is gonna be what's on your, your hand pump, your fill tank, um, your compressor. However, this little fitting, this silver one, does not generally, as a matter of fact, hardly ever come with the brass portion that will come with your guns. You will need to order one that looks just like this. Okay, this is an Air Venturi um, 8th or 1 8th BSP, or I think sometimes they're called BSPP fittings. 
you will need to order one of these. The only other way that you can make this work is if you are lucky enough to have threads on your tank uh, fitting where you can unscrew this and literally screw your nipple into it. However, it's better just to go ahead and get yourself one of these eighth inch um, BSP fittings, okay? You can find those on Amazon. You can find them through Pyramid. You can certainly find them with uh, the people that I use at High Pressure Pneumatics. Um, but, uh, you know, just make sure that you buy a quality one. If you are going to order on Amazon, definitely shoot for like an Air Venturi or something like that. Because I have ordered cheaper ones off of Amazon and generally they do not fit. So <laughs> that causes a problem when you just waited a day or two for this fitting to arrive. You're all excited. You're going to fill your gun and it doesn't work. So, like I said, very common question about fill probes, okay? They will not come with this quick connect fitting that will connect to the end of your um, tank, to the end of your um, stirrup pump, and I will show that once I bring those up here as well. Um, so that's, that's a, a really good start to, you have to have the appropriate equipment in order to fill one of these guns, okay? Another question that I hear all the time, what's the best pellet for my gun? Okay, um, that's a horrible question to ask. Okay, I take that back. It's not a horrible question to ask, but it's a very inaccurate question to ask, and let me explain why. The majority of some of these PCP shooters out there have, um, maybe they only shoot 20 yards, right? Or, um, or maybe they shoot 100 yards. Um, but, you, you know, you don't really know that. And everybody's got their favorite brand. Everybody out there. But you have to learn when you're shooting PCPs and really any of like the high pressure brake barrels like the nitro pistons or the magnum springers. Pellets are not universal. So you may have the exact same Hots and Bull Boss that I have right here. Your gun may shoot, this is in 22 caliber, your, your gun may shoot um, JSB 18.13 you know, pellets perfect. 100% of the time, it's unbelievable. You can't miss, and you've, you've documented it, you got it on paper. But I can tell you right now, my Hots and Bull Boss does not care for, as much as some others, the JSB 18.13 grains. My Hots and Bull Boss likes the Air Arms 18.13 grains much more than it likes the JSB 18.13 grains. So keep that in mind. Pellets are one of those things that if you're going to get into air gun shooting, you should have a bunch of different weights, um, uh, brands, um, you know, just a bunch of different stuff to try out. Whether you have slugs and pellets, and I, I actually brought some examples. Uh, and these are these are some very common pellets that I shoot in my 22 calibers. Um, these are 15.89 grain JSB Hades. Um, I have a few 22 calibers that absolutely love these, uh, including my FX Maverick. Um, this is a tin of the JSB 18.13 exacts, and I have 22 caliber guns that love these pellets. I have some, don't care for either one of them. This is a pack of Polymag shorts. Um, Polymags are, these are, I think, uh, 16, oh, 15.89 grain, so 16 grain, um, I have some 22 calibers that love these. I have other guns that do not love these. So when you ask somebody, what's the best pellet out there for 22 caliber shooting? And some guy who has a gun that shoots polymags hole in hole all the way up to 50 yards. I don't know. I'm just saying he's going to say you need to get yourself some polymags. But I'm here to tell you, your gun may not care for polymags. So before you go out and buy 10 freaking tins of polymags, buy one tin of polymags, buy one tin of exacts, buy one tin of Hades,
buy yourself a tin of H&N Slug HPs. These are in the 2.17 um, uh, uh, head size. And, uh, you know, and, and try these things because your gun may shoot the same as mine, but it may not. So when you ask somebody, what's the best pellet out there? You're going to get, you know, a hundred people that are going to view that post and everybody's an expert. And I'm not saying that I am, but everybody else is. And they're going to tell you what their favorite pellet is, the best pellet they've ever used. And it's going to cause you to become potentially very frustrated when you go out and you get on Pyramid or, or anybody else's website and you go, man, if I buy four, I get one free. And you buy a whole sleeve of one pallet and your gun can't make heads or tails of it. Hear me now, believe me later, or please just hear me now and, and take advantage of what I'm trying to offer. Buy yourself four different tins of different 22 or 177 or 25 or 30 caliber ammo scratch 30 cal because there's not a lot of it but 25 22 and 177 and test your gun see what your gun likes it's not going to kill you to buy a couple extra tins you can still shoot them for outdoor backyard plinking just keep that in mind don't fall prey to spending a hundred dollars or more on one pellet just to find out that your gun does not care for those pellets Slugs is a very, very good point in that not every gun shoots slugs well. Aha, keep that in mind. The best thing that you can do is if you are interested in shooting slugs, and what I would highly recommend is go visit Nielsen Specialty Ammunition or Ammo and SA Slugs. You've heard it through these forums and on YouTube all the time. And Nick puts together these great little sampler packs. He does them for 177, 2225. I don't know if he does them in the 30 and the 357 and all those. He probably does. Um, I just don't personally own any of them, so I don't want to speak to that. But if that's the caliber of gun that you have, do that. I don't care if you're shooting a Benjamin Marauder or if you're shooting a Benjamin Bulldog or an Air Force Texan in 45 caliber. There's going to be one ammunition that is going to absolutely make that gun sing and that's what we that's what we're after we're not after anything more than accuracy if you don't want accuracy go buy yourself a bb gun and just hope to god that you hit it or get a slingshot and learn how to become accurate with that these guns are made for accuracy we don't want to go out and especially if you're hunting wound a bunch of animals because your ammunition is not accurate Right? There's nothing worse than having a squirrel with a, you know, a, you know, a, a terrible infection in his in his hindquarters uh, because, you know, you, you hit him in the butt and, you know, now he's got this, you know, and he's suffering. I mean, that, that's just terrible. Nobody wants that. So anyway. All right. So we've talked about filling guns or we've talked about the different types of um, fill um, apparatuses that we have and these are all different as well i mean you know one fill probe is not exact to the next one i've got a whole table full of them over there uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is filling your gun and how you can do that um, one great way to do it if you're new to this sport and not really sure if you're going to be sticking around or maybe maybe you just want the the gun to uh you know once a year go out with your buddies who air gun hunt or maybe you want to hunt around the backyard plink around the backyard um, this is a great way to go. Uh, this happens to be the uh, Air Venturi G9. Um, I picked this up, uh, I don't even remember where I got this one, but uh, this was my original hand pump. And, uh, and it's a great pump. It's a great pump. Uh, I can basically fill up my, or my gauntlet from empty to full, just about like 150 to 200 pumps. I can't remember exactly, because it's been a while. But um, from like, you know, let's say I drain my gun down to like say uh, 1300 PSI and a 3000 PSI fill, uh, it usually takes about 60, 70 pumps to uh, fill the gun back up. It's not the most efficient pump and you can buy pumps that, are, that, that take less energy to, uh, you know, do the uh, same amount. But uh, this is a great, great way 
to fill your gun. Uh, the important thing about any time that you're filling a gun is this little section here is actually where there is a uh, water filter. And what it is, is it's basically like, a, to me it looks like kind of like a piece of magic eraser. Um, and, and these pumps actually come with extras. Um, but uh, having these changed regularly um, is pretty important because we want to keep all the moisture out of the internals of these guns as they will not <laughs> they will not last long if you introduce a lot of water to their internals okay so here's one way um, another way is to buy yourself a compressor my compressor is actually sitting over here it's kind of menagerie into a a whole different um apparatus that kind of keeps it in place with all my water separators and things like that um, but one thing that i would like to point out is that if you're new to the sport and you are looking to get into um um you know filling your tank i'll try to put a picture like over here there should be a picture over here um young hang compressors great way to go uh, they're relatively inexpensive. I think you can get them on uh, Amazon for less than, you know. And um, the best part about it is, is that you can always add, or at least at this point, they're less than $300 or they're right at $300. Um, the, um, the best part is, is that with Amazon, you can buy that extended protection plan. I think it's like $40 for like four years. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Definitely worth the buy. If I was to say to anybody who's getting into this sport or anybody who's looking to move forward in this sport, a compressor should be the first thing after a hand pump. Compressor first. Now, there's going to be people out there, and I guarantee you there's somebody watching right now that goes, that's bullshit, man. I don't need no damn compressor, man. I go up to my damn paintball shop and have them fill up my tank. I stand correct. Have at it, sir. But, in my personal opinion, a compressor is the best way to go first. And let me explain why. During 2020, many, many paintball shops, air gun shops, things like that were closed down. And all those people that were stuck with a tank had no way to fill it. As a matter of fact, you can join lots and lots right now of air gun um, pages and uh, groups on Facebook. And you're going to see people all the time going, hey, anybody know where I can get my tank filled? Here's your sign. Buy yourself a compressor first. Compressors are easy to use. Uh, the you know they're the majority of them, especially in the lower price range. They're not heavy. Uh, you know you could simply just plug your gun in, and in a matter of a couple moments, have your gun full, ready to shoot again, and on your way you go. Now I understand that there's going to be some people that are like, well, wait, Moose, what happens if there's no power? Listen, I don't have an answer for everything, but. I can tell you, in my opinion, buy yourself a compressor before you go out and buy yourself a tank. It'll save you a lot of headache in the long run. Why, you say? Because all guns are different. And air tanks, oftentimes, only have so many charges in them when it comes to larger capacity guns. And when I say that, I don't mean, I mean, it's obvious that they only have so many charges in them, but I can honestly tell you that my FX Maverick even though I do obtain about 250 shots, 260 shots per fill, true story. Um, if I was stuck with just my tank and my gun, I can only get approximately three and a half, maybe four if I really have only used it for the Maverick, at which point after a thousand rounds, my tank's empty. You get yourself into, um, let's say a Zabroya Kozak. 300 bar fill. Good luck filling that with an air tank, even once. I personally, with my air tank, can only fill up my buddy's gun to about 275 bar at a time. My tank, for some reason, just will not help him get to 300 bar. Take it for what you want. Don't argue with me. I'm just simply telling you what I, what I suggest. All right, moving on. The next thing, the old air tank. Love my air tank. I don't know what I would do without my air tank. That's a true story. That is a true story. 
I absolutely love my Air Venturi air tank. It is amazing. And if I'm filling my Gauntlet or my Maverick or my Bull Boss or my Marauder or anything else, I can certainly fill quite a bit of, of guns with this one tank. Um, getting yourself a longer hose is a great idea. Why, you say? Because the one that comes with it is about this long from there to there, and it makes it a little awkward sometimes to try to plug your gun into a short little whip. So that's my suggestion. Once again, just my suggestion. I'm not saying you have to, because you don't. You can get away without it. But looking at the end of this fitting here, this is how you take your fitting. Simply slide it back, put your fitting for your Hotson or whatever gun that you need right into the end of the gun, and you're full. Separate the two when you're done. Now I can plug it into my gauntlet or my FX. All right, we are not going to go into tank operation today. So please understand how your tank works. Okay, I'm gonna say this one thing. If you're new to this and you have a tank, most tanks come with, with one of these little uh, check plugs. Okay, the reason that you put that in the end is so that you can see the pressure that's actually in your tank. So if I take my tank and I open up my valve, it should go up to about 300 bar because that's where I had it. Come yeah, on. All right, whatever, 250 because apparently I forgot that I filled some up. This hose is now completely full of, oh, I don't know, 275 bar worth of air. That's dangerous as F. You understand? All tanks have a bleed screw. Listen, <laughs> hear that? You want to make sure that you do that before you try to disconnect this from your gun or pull that little plug out of the end. Don't believe me? Let me know how it works out for you. Um, my air pump or my hand pump has the exact same thing. It actually has a release valve back here. So what happens is, is that if you're pumping your your uh, tube up. Watch, listen. Hear that? That's to release the pressure. You always want to release the pressure before trying to disconnect anything from your gun. Big booms, not good. Don't try that at home. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, more PCP talk. Um, regulated versus unregulated guns. <clears throat> this is my Benjamin Marauder. I love this gun. This is probably one of my all-time favorite guns um, for anybody who is new to air gunning. And honestly, listen, if you only plan to buy one gun and your budget is $500 or less, Hear me now, believe me later, buy yourself a Benjamin Marauder. Not going to go into all the details on why, but just have a little faith in the fact that I care very much about you guys and what you end up with in your arsenal. Ask around. Ask other people, hey, what do you think of the Benjamin Marauder? If you hear somebody show up and go, oh, dude, those things are junk. Quickly excuse yourself from that conversation with that guy because he honestly does not know anything that he's talking about. Nobody will dispute the Benjamin Marauder. It is that good of a damn gun. Listen to that again. It is that good of a damn gun. The trigger on the Benjamin Marauder is un. I mean, there, there's nothing else in the $500 or less price range that has a trigger like the Benjamin Marauder. Don't care. Talk all you want. Put comments below. It's a true story. It is a true story. Um, believe me, I have so many air guns, I don't even know what to do with it. And unless there's one out there that I just have no clue about and I've not just like seen it for some reason, maybe I'll admit the fact that I didn't know about that one gun. But I can tell you that owning over 50 guns, yeah, yep, trust me. All right, 
So um, another thing that you want to look at is optics, okay? So I want to talk about a few of the optics that I use personally that I would recommend for anybody who's getting into PCP air gunning. This is a UTG. Uh, this is the 4 to 16 um, by 44. It has an aluminum or an aluminum, an illuminated reticle. It's got a big parallax wheel on the side. Well, this is an add on. You can actually get the parallax wheel smaller, bigger, but either way, it's got a side adjustable parallax. It's got locking turrets. So you can actually snug these down once you've zeroed your gun in. Uh, it comes with the uh, flip shades and um, it actually comes with um, a set of rings as well. One thing to also keep in mind is that generally these scopes are going to come with Picatinny rail mount rings. The Benjamin Marauder, at least the one that I have, this is a non-regulated gun. The field and target version actually does come with a Picatinny rail, but this has dovetail rings or dovetail mounts. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to what mounts are come with your gun and what potential scope rings come with your scope. You may uh, pick up a different scope that re you know requires you to pick up a separate set of rings. Definitely make sure that you focus on what your gun has. Moving along to scope rings, generally, as you can see, there is an opening right here in the breech. This is where the magazine for the Benjamin Marauder enters into the um, gun. These are, um, I think these are, yeah, they might be high scope rings, but I can tell you from experience, low mounted scope rings on this style of gun, no bueno. They will not work. You will not be able to put your magazine into the gun. There are other guns out there that are not reliant on that. Like, for example, the Bull Boss. The magazine for the Bull Boss enters here. It actually has a rised or a raised um, Picatinny mount here. And the scope rings, these are the, actually, these are medium scope rings as well and they fit perfectly right onto my cheek weld, okay? So there's that, all right? So just, just make sure that you understand, you know, and, and I'm not gonna get really super in depth in this, but I definitely wanna give you guys an idea. Um, moderators is another thing that people oftentimes talk about, and I can honestly tell you that get the gun first, shoot the gun, and make a decision on whether or not you feel that you need a moderator on the end of your gun to make it quieter. Some people out there, it's kind of humorous to me. They're like, dude, I don't want to hear anything come out of the end of my gun. Hey, that's groovy. That's great. You know, spend a couple hundred dollars on a moderator. Me personally, I have too many guns to worry about how loud is it or how loud isn't it. I kind of go based on ear if I take it out in my backyard and I pull the trigger and I do live on the lake and I can hear a major report across the lake, crack, 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 crack from my gun. That's when I'm going to put a moderator on a gun. If my gun just goes, Pew, why do I care? I don't. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just simply explaining that's why people generally want to purchase a moderator. You start getting into the bigger caliber guns and you betcha you're going to probably want to get a moderator because they are extremely loud once you've gotten into the 30, 35, 45, 50 caliber range. Really loud. Unless you're buying something that's got built-in shrouding, even then they can still be surprisingly loud. So just keep that in mind, guys. Um, I think that's just about it. Um, if I missed anything, please drop a comment below and uh, I'll take a look at it and we'll see if we can't answer those questions for you. You know, I just wanted to kind of give everybody kind of a basic overview of entering into the realm of PCPs because there's so many things out there and there's so many questions and it's tough sometimes, guys. I get it. Listen, when I first started getting into PCPs, I was confused. I didn't really know. 
I was like, man, what's going on? How do I do that? Or why do I do that? Or how do I get this to fit? And I had to ask the same questions. Now, years later, I get it. So I just want to share a little bit of my insight. You know, hopefully this video was, was great for you. And if you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, give it a thumbs up. I definitely appreciate all the thumbs up we can get. And of course, for my, for my uh, resident trolls, please hit that thumbs down button, you freaking trolls who live in mom's basement, because you're humorous to me and my viewers. We laugh about you often. You should check me out on Instagram. It's even funnier the way that we make fun of you there. So with all that being said, I'm Moose. This is Aragons of Michigan. And we will be back with more and more informative videos for you guys. And maybe not for you guys, but they'll all be Aragon related. Take care. Have a great night.